Baratan Likomayani and welcome back to my YouTube channel with Baratan. Today I bring you another episode of Entrepreneurship 101 and my guest today is the gamer CEO of Space Salad Studios, the double S S. Yeah. <laughs> 23 year old here to tell us all about his journey to getting to where he is currently as a business owner of a gaming studio. Thank you for, oh wait, I didn't introduce him. <laughs> his name is Tabo Tuna. Uh, thank you so much for that warm introduction. Wow, like, you made me sound so important. <laughs> Yeah, I just make games and yeah. What? Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Your yeah. story has been like so inspiring to share off so far. And I can't wait for you to share it with everyone who's watching. So a 23 year old has achieved so much. Hmm. What was the starting point? So where did this all start? Because I know um, you were into like art like fine art and then you went into animation mm -hmm. and now you're into gaming yeah so what is the build up to now you owning your own company i started out in fine arts i did that in high school and then i moved into during high school i used to uh, draw political cartoons you know, like okay. what's up here with us and that was just a way for me to voice what i was feeling at the time my parents were going through like a big lawsuit with a big big company mm -hmm. so i was like being conscientized politically and that's when i started drawing cartoons and i got my cartoons published for like local newspapers and like the daily maverick guys like that and for me when i because coming from an artist i wanted to always tell a story you know i always wanted to tell my stories and how i see the world so when i went into um uh, caricature that's when i could like tell my story but i was limited to how i can tell my story and I, I realized that what I'm doing is I'm pointing fingers more than I'm telling my story. So I was like mm -hmm. looking for something where I can fully express myself without any limitations. And I finished high school, circulated, and then I studied animation and game design. I was really after animation because I thought that was a medium where I could really tell these crazy wild ideas that I have without any limits because you know you can literally draw whatever you want. So I did that and then while I was doing animation, I get I get got pulled by something. I don't know what it was, but it <laughs> a was force. a force, you know, like an energy that I couldn't explain, I couldn't understand of games, you know. I made my first game as an assignment. It was a 2D platformer game about taxis and I posted it on Facebook. A lot of people I, and I got like such a crazy response, you know, people were like hitting me up like, hey dude. It's so cool man like, and that game was so bad like yo really? yo I, I still like i don't tell people about it but like that's my genesis you know um so yeah that was the game that i released and people hit me up to a point where i managed to um, launch it at back to the city so i was like oh, okay. one of the only guys that were making games before back to the city mm -hmm. made games you know or had a game store so people came to check it out it was going crazy they loved it and i was like okay cool that's that was fun you know that's Publicity, I got free tickets, I got, you know, clout. Let me go back to animation. Went back to animation, worked on like a, a young mini series on a, a some woman that controls the electricity in South Africa. And okay. when she does her rituals, that's when the lights go on. But she was disturbed by a little rat. And I worked with my partner, Neil. We worked on that. We submitted for uh, Cartoon Network. And that didn't get as much publicity or recognition as the Taxi Wheels got. Yeah. And then I released my second game with the same guys that I collaborated with on Taxi Wheels. Mm -hmm. About a guy who goes around town beating up like guys in suits because they're trying to steal his swag, you know? And it was a clothing game where you can like get clothes, local brands. And it was also another big hit. And then I was like, hey, maybe I'm onto something. And my mentor, I remember my mentor telling me, he was like, dude, everyone's doing animation, you know? I think this is where you should be, you know? And I, I didn't want to take it because I wanted to tell stories. I didn't know that I could tell stories using mm -hmm. games, you know? And it's even better because you like fully immerse someone in the game, you know? Like they make the decisions for themselves, you know? In your world that you created. You know? Yeah. And yeah, so from there on, yeah, I left, I graduated, um, went to 
uh, do a film and television course, got some young internship, shot a, my first short film. That was cool, like again, storytelling, you know, yeah. I like to tell stories. How come I'm not going over the time? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I'm lost, I'm lost in the songs, you know, it's not every day somebody asks me about my job. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, I showed my first short film about a serial killer who can like do the job. Oh, and a VR. And they're using the VR as like a tool to rehabilitate ex-convicts. Okay. And they replay the crime that they committed. So like, with GBV, yeah. the guy beating up his wife over and over until he stops with, but in, within VR so they can rehabilitate. But and these projects, were they still part of your assignments? Or is yeah, this was all my assignments. Like, when I go in, I go in. Like, that is incredible. Yeah, That's impressive. Know. Thank you. I know I'm not like your average student, you know. <laughs> You're like to, a nerd. Yeah, I didn't go to prom to party. I did. Oh, I didn't. But yeah. <laughs> so yeah, at least that was big. Um, but then the gaming thing came about. I got a call to design a game for like it was me and 14 other African countries to collaborate okay. on one game that's mm -hmm. gonna like solve the, the problems that we have in Africa through gamification and it was the first time I was actually introduced to a, a genre of gaming called serious games where you make a game on like real topics mm -hmm. and try and get teach people while they're playing games you know gamification and I did that went to Germany launched it released the game there went to Ethiopia released the game there it was really successful and, and how old were you at that point in your life? I mean, you're only 23. When did you do all of these things? I, I, I have a time machine. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I was think I was 21, 22 when I did that. Okay. That, that German thing, and then yeah, came back to SA. Now, because I, I saw the world, I saw how the world works. Now I'm like very, you know, forward thinking. I have all these crazy ideas. And then I get a job to work for a studio. Yeah, a studio called and what they, it's an advertising and film production company. And they worked on like some content for Netflix. They worked on Shadow, they worked on some of the lighting and all of that stuff there. So okay. I worked with them for a while and yeah, that force man kept on because I used to work at a wind like close to a window. They used to always throw rocks and be like <laughs> Let's go, man. Like, let's go. And then I got this call for this enterprise development thing where, I, like, when I brought, uh, broke up, or how we got the name Space Salad. Mm -hmm. So I got that call and they were like, yo, dude, we're looking for a game designer. Uh, this company is funding a studio to make games and you're looking for someone who's experienced in that field. So I already had my games, uh, the games that I've made. Mm -hmm. But this was like a hobby, it wasn't like a serious thing, yeah. you know? And they hit me up and I was like, okay, cool, let me check it out. I told the guys, uh, you guys, you know, I have this opportunity and I don't know because I like it here, but now, of course. It's, yeah, like, and I remember my boss at the time telling me that, hey, dude, like, I feel like if you really believe in this, then you should go for it, you know, like, this is your calling, go for it. The last thing that we want here is you to be sad or miserable because you're going to start an opportunity. Mm -hmm. you know? I was like, oh my God, my heart was crying. <laughs> And I left, and yeah, and uh, we're here now with the first uh, game for the studio called Top and Dash. And yeah, we've been winning awards. We've been uh, it's, we've been getting a lot of traction on the game. You know, um, we won Comic Con Africa Best Indie Game of 2020. Um, we won Best Selection at Cinema.io. It's an online gaming platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the list is endless. You know. Um, we, right now we're showcasing at Fabu Gesi, one of the biggest tech and immersive digital media festivals on the continent. So yeah, it's like really been very progressive. It's been up here, but also like some downhills in between. Mm -hmm. This was my first time actually going in a business setting and you know learning how a business operates. You know how you should conduct yourself, how you should like build yourself. And like, how has that been for you? Like now needing to take your this force that mm -hmm. came from a passion and convert it into like this seriousness where mm -hmm. now finances are involved and you know 
it's like a thing that affects also other people's lives. Mm. It's not only your own journey, but now you've included the combinations of the salad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me let me have some water. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's been it's been a, a very emotional roller coaster. It's been like a a, a professional roller coaster as well. You know, like mm-hmm. I've never I've always been like I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit you know like I always wanted to hustle like for me networking was always my thing like I always told myself that I could sell anything to anyone and I could you know I had a promotions job one time and I used to sell chips off the best <laughs> sales chips at the time so my chips <laughs> but yeah so for me I've always had that drive but I didn't understand the sacrifices and like how much it takes for you to be to, to start a business you know what I mean and yeah like that that determination and that perseverance you know it's it's like business is not for the faint heart like a lot of businesses fail and i see why it's not easy guys like yeah this thing you 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 fighting so many battles and i think what i think and i always mention this to my teammates is that one thing i think i've managed to master is to find a balance between my creativity and the business side mm-hmm. because even though my business side has suffered I know my business my artistic side has suffered because I needed to like you know put in the extra hours to learn the business I've managed to find that balance not to lose myself because once you're chasing that that, that check you know yeah. once you're chasing clients once you're chasing investors you know you forget the artistic side and you know because when you're an artist you just want to create for the love of it Mm-hmm. But then when you're in business, you gotta pay bills. You know, you mentioned that there's people counting on me, you know, there's people that their lives or well being are, are in this, you know, and if I mess up, I'm not only messing up for me, mm-hmm. I'm So all of that is like pressure, like so much. <laughs> and you gotta yeah. take that every day. Like every every morning you wake up it's like a battle. What's happening? Like are you guys what's the biggest problem that's gonna happen today? Are you gonna like fight with someone? Are you gonna lose something? You're gonna win something, you know? And I think that's what makes me stick around for it is because the unknown and the potential of me realizing my dream. Yeah. Yeah. And now that you've mentioned the dynamic of you being affected in other people's lives, how have other people been affecting your life? Mm changed you as a person now going from having this talent that has become i don't know this force Mm -hmm. whatever we decide to call it (laughs) and now realizing that you have to include other people in your dream and them having an impact in the direction that your dream goes Mm -hmm. how has that been has that been a challenge are you coping with that Mm -hmm. how are you dealing with that dynamic it was at first it was a challenge. I think I think the universe or God or whatever you guys um, choose to believe in has put me in this situation or this place on purpose. Because like I, when I mentioned my my journey, it was always about me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I didn't bring up anyone. Throughout, like, <laughs> yes. It was just me, 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 and that there was that was me. Then I was like, I am I'm on the. I was a trailblazer, you know, I, I marched to the rhythm of my own feet. I didn't need help, I didn't see myself needing any help, you know. If I couldn't do something myself, I'd find a way or I'd leave it. Then I'd tell myself it's not for me, then I'll find something better to do, you know. So, for me, from being that guy to stepping in this business world where now, like what you mentioned, there's people relying on me and there's people that are like literally in charge of doing this big thing with me, you know. Or they could potentially even flop it. Yo, the first two months of starting the company was hell. Not first two months, like six months, I'd say. Because firstly, I had to deal with different personalities. Yeah. They were in my space, you know, and I don't, I'm one for, I like my space. I might be an extrovert, but I still like my space, you mm-hmm. know. They were in my space, um, they were doing something new, you know, that kind of, what irked me was that they didn't know what they were doing at some stages, you know, and it was like I had to now show them, I had to be patient, but I wasn't willing to be patient because that's not in my nature. I'm not used to working with people, you know, so that was like, I was, it was constant tension because I was like, oh, yeah, like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Like, you know, 
until time went by and I realized that you know what, it's not about who's in your team, it's about what you can do t- towards the vision, you know. And once I started thinking like that, it became more easier. Where I was like, this person has this talent, you know. They might not be able to draw, they might not be able to code or whatever, but they have the skill that can take the company forward or take the team forward, you know, and they can help me because I'm like now in this mean big guy who knows it all, you know, I'm taking all of the jobs and I'm trying to do them myself, but I can't, I'm burning out, I can't do everything at once. And then they managed to alleviate that where I can pass it on to you or pass it on to them. And, you know, I can focus on the important one, you know, so it made me realize that when you have a team, you can do a lot more than when you're alone. Mm-hmm. You know, and as, as as a leader, your responsibility is to position everyone in their strengths to like key roles so that they can bring out maximum effort and you can focus on the vision. Because one, one thing I've also noticed as well is that because I was working with a team that I didn't want or, you know, I wasn't, it was my first time in a yeah. team environment, um, I was reluctant to be a leader. You know, okay. I was just like, every time people ask me for something or the blame was put on me, I was just like, no ways, I'm not going to take responsibility, this is not my mess, you know, it's all about me, I'm clean on my side, you can see my side is clean, but ultimately, if you want people to um, work with you on your vision, you have to lead the vision to a point where whatever you do, mess up, whatever, you have to take it, you know, and it took me a long time, even now, I'm still like a bit touchy about it but like if you don't show your vision and you don't make people fall in love with that vision no one's gonna support you no one's gonna follow and that's the last thing you want to do as someone who's going into business that you want people to just follow something they don't see yeah and, and that's the thing not all of us are blessed with that vision or not uh, are not blessed with that um what's this uh, leadership skills but i feel that if you have a vision and a clear one people are most likely to follow regardless and i think that's such an important life lesson like people are just under the impression that if i'd like to call it like a god-given talent Mm -hmm. was handed to you and you grasp it you think that okay this is mine and mine only i have to find a way to make this work by myself and in a way that or it's common for people to fall out along the way because they don't have that support you know and i don't know i'd like to assume that that contributed positively to where you are today winning all these awards having accomplished what it was you accomplished in Mm. a year a year yeah that's so, very um, impressive yeah and you're also doing like groundbreaking <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> <Ooh>. yeah <laughs> you're also doing groundbreaking work in terms of making a change in the community yeah and so you started an initiative within your line of work to teach children how to recycle mm. so how, where does that then that is such a it's incredible oh, it's you. so incredible but oh, how did you <laughs> find yourself there <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh uh so uh the product that you speak about is called Dompa dash mm-hmm. so i don't know maybe the viewers might know some might but it's a game based on uh the the reclaimers uh aka I like to call them street surfers. Everyone has a name for them, like yeah. Father Christmas, from Khadezi, <laughs> the guys with the trolley basically. And you might see them around when it's like trash collection day in your neighborhood, where they looking, scraping your bin, looking for like recycled material, which they put in their trolley and they recycle for cash. Mm-hmm. So for me, I was like, at home they come around every Friday. It used to come Thursday, but now they come on Friday. And I used to, like everyone else, I used to see him from the distance, like, ah, this guy, he's dirty, you know, he's pushing a trolley out, what, like, ugh, like, I don't care about his life, you know, I'm pushing, I'm hustling, my, I'm doing my own thing. I was like everyone else, until one day my dad brought one of the guys in for, mm-hmm. like, breakfast. And while I was chilling there in the kitchen, getting ready for school, making breakfast, 
see this guy walking. I'm like, yo, everyone's freaking out in the house. Oh my god, yo, what is being in a homeless man? Like, yo, what if he robs us? Like, you know, yeah. I think it's natural. Typical, yeah. yeah, like people would react that way, especially if they don't have some form of relationship with the guy. It's a complete stranger, you know. Okay, everyone's freaking out, but like freaking out in silence because. Even like we don't want to offend. We don't want to offend. We yeah. we might be scared, but we still want to do, you know. Uh, so we want to now bothering up my brain, and this guy is having a conversation with my father. He's just telling him about where he's from, what he's doing, the reasons why he came to Joburg, he's from Lesotho, and like the reason why he does this thing, you know, this work, this line of work, you know, as as ugly as it might look, it's actually doing a lot for the communities, for the planet, and for his family. You know, he's just hustling to make an income for his family, you know, it could have resulted in doing a lot of things, you know, maybe get a snake or, you know, it's an inside joke. Okay. Snakes are trending now, snakes are trending now. <laughs> but yeah, you can get a snake, you could have committed crimes, you know, but like, he, he's pushing a toy. So I was like, yo, I had a Eureka moment. I'm like, okay, why don't, why don't we make a game about these guys? And make like really cool, like need for speed for these guys and explains yeah. the work that they do. And then that was the first initial idea. And then when I started putting on my business cap, like, okay, how can I make money out of this? Then I thought, well, actually, these, this game could teach children how to recycle, you know? We can gamify the whole recycling aspect where we teach children about these guys' line of work and also how to recycle and sort their waste. Because recycling is not only about you throwing something in the bin, it's about sorting it. So plastic goes with plastic, paper goes with plastic. So it's basically the whole system or ecosystem of these guys and what they do. And I'm like, let me merge the two together. And yeah, that's how Dopa Dash was born. So you thoroughly explained that you possess both the creative and the business caps yeah both caps, caps yeah, yeah those caps so you have both the the, the the business and the creative caps in your possession mm -hmm. and you've used that to get to where you are to achieve all the things you've achieved and those things don't come easily like i said like the creative part of you you were definitely born with it it's not like someone can just take it away yeah, take it away or just learn it overnight. Yeah. You have acquired probably many skills over the years while getting your qualification and your work experience. But it's, it's not human nature to just be born with a business mindset. Yeah. And so a lot of people could possess that, that um, creativity or that talent or that skill, but not necessarily the business part of it mm -hmm. is that business part of your company something you had initially from the get-go or is it something you had to learn as well um i think yes and no okay yes in a sense that uh, like i mentioned i've always been an, a hustler or entrepreneur like i've always been the guy that at every event or whatever i'm the guy who can speak to anyone mm -hmm. get them interested in what i'm doing and kind of buy into it, you know. The sales yeah, specialist. Sales specialist. So I, yeah, so that's something that I feel like I was born with. That's something inherits from the family. You know, we are people's like my family is like people's people, so like they get along with each other. You know? That's how you brought in like homeless people at home. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, but yeah. Um so that I feel like was given, but the whole business side of it, so understanding how business works, contracts, that's something that like everyone needs to learn, you know, something that comes with a lot of trial and error, a lot of pain. So that's something that I had to learn myself and everyone that I was involved in, in terms of learning how to read contact, contracts, learning how to um, <laughs> create a marketing strategy, you know, business plan, things that you overlook. And you always hear people talking about it, especially like, at, you know, shows like this where people are like talking about, I started this, I had this, and I had this, and I had this. And that's so important, you know, you can have like the best idea on the planet like you could have the solution to solve world hunger but if you don't have a strategy a strategy you know the, the business stuff lined up the documents then it's always going to be an idea you know so for me that's why i for me i, I struggled at first i'm still learning i'm not really 100 mm percent -hmm. but I'm, I'm 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 really i'm at a place where i'm really confident to say that i can sign checks now <laughs> for x amount of money 
And that's that's an important skill to have. I mean, that is the make or break of your business anyway. Mm. And with everything that you've learned and everything that you've encountered in your business, what has been that one thing that shocked you the most that you really did not expect to need to know? Hmm. You know, sometimes, <laughs> and you know, it's really funny. Like, you know, what the business there. Yeah? You, you know, there's never a, a dull moment. Like, you'll always be shocked, <laughs> even with the things you know. You know, like you know that, for example, this plant is prickly. I wanna touch it, and I wanna get that sensation. You know, like, oh shit, this thing pricked me. Yeah. But it's still gonna feel like, whoa, this thing pricked me. <laughs> like, I knew it. So it's like, it's like that. You know, like. I don't know if I can say it. There's so many, but like <laughs> I, I'll say that don't trust no one. You know, like okay. with business, if, even your friend. Like with business, like unless it's written down somewhere, it doesn't count for anything. You know, mm-hmm. unless I get something to say that I was on your show and you let <laughs> me sign, I can deny it and I say this was like forced. You know, I, yeah. I, I was, you know, I can get you in trouble. You know, mm-hmm. so it's 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 like that, like. Unless something is done on paper, it's always gonna come back and shock you. It's always gonna come back and that yeah. seems like a, a very important That's a lesson for all you young entrepreneurs or people that are starting not even business, like even jobs, like if you don't read your contracts, you don't like make sure that everything that you want or everything that you're getting yourself into is on paper, then I'm sorry, you're gonna hey you're gonna feel the burn. <laughs> I actually wanna start a school, me and my, my business partner. Uh, we, the exploitation school. What? Where we bring people in and we exploit them like crazy young people. He's just lying, exploit he's them. not telling the truth. I mean it, like, we've, I've, if I was to count how many times me and my business partner or whoever I've worked in it has been exploited, like, so it's not even new anymore. Like I can see someone when they're gonna explain. Like, really? well, <laughs> let me keep quiet. Because you like don't want to put it on paper. Yeah, like you, you telling me all these nice things. Yeah, I can give you a Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like F boy. You know, when you go, like, when you go to a girl, they promise the girl heaven on earth, and nine times out of ten they don't deliver. You know, so yeah. Okay, well, noted yeah. for myself as well. Please, if this is anyone go on. who's featuring on my channel, they will be paid for training. <laughs> <laughs> Not to scare you, you know, like you're still starting out, but like when you're making millions, I can always come back and say, "Yeah, dude, my my episode was there." <laughs> so come on. That's very true. But come hopefully, on. firstly, I get to the the stage of being a millionaire. You are. Don't give up. You I are. You are. Don't give up. <laughs> Okay, and lastly, for anyone who's out there watching you, what would you say was your, well, besides the force, but going into something that is not a typical black child's route? <laughs> I, I, was, I wanted that question. <laughs> yeah. How would you encourage a black child like me, black female, black male, to just step out of the roots that 90% of the youth is taking mm-hmm. and follow your own path regardless of whether you're the only person who looks the way you do in that space. I'd say, and it's, it's like, we're living in a different world right now where information is out there, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd say, get do your research, you know, if you can. I know it's hard, you know, it's really hard to do research on something you don't know. Yeah. Or like, you have no clue of, it's like me doing research on, I don't know what. It's literally, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you don't know what you're researching. Yeah, so I say do research, you know, just go on Google and what, like, do research on things that you're passionate about that could be a start. You know, if you like watching cartoons, just check out how it's done, you know, and that's something that could develop your passion, you know. Mm-hmm. That's one way of going. That's like, on a blanket answer like just do your research secondly if you can if you have access to a mentor or someone that you know that's doing something extraordinary you know it's always important to have a mentor like get yourself a mentor mentor will literally uh, increase your growth like 
exponentially. Like you won't even know. No research will help you as much as like a mentor and if you have a vision, you know. And then I think another thing is just be out there, you know, just like things. Because I, I I'm 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 where I am today because I was liking things. You know? I wasn't afraid. I was afraid of I was more afraid of losing out or being this person that I don't want to be than mm-hmm. me actually applying and getting that job, you know, getting that thing. You know, a lot of things that I've applied for I've done in my life, I didn't qualify. But because I was determined and yeah. I was like, you know what, whoever's gonna read my proposal or my application or is gonna go wow. You know, I had a job, like funny story. While I'm speaking about that, <laughs> I had a job. I don't know if it's funny or not, but okay, it's funny to me. <laughs> so um, I had a job. I got a job teaching children how to be entrepreneurs, and that time I was still studying. Okay. You know, I was still in college studying animation. So how that happened? I don't know. Like, and these kids were all like, "Wow, this guy, he, he knows this stuff." I even came with my school player to show you. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But like, I had a job to do that, and it shows you that if you persevere, you know, you get yourself out there, you develop yourself. You know, you there's nothing that's gonna prepare you in life more than mistakes and taking risks. Mm-hmm. Calculated risks, though. Don't don't apply for things that you know that look dodgy. Yeah. I don't want you guys to come back and say, yo, Tawa. Told us to yeah, shoot our shot. Now I'm kidnapped now. What must I do? No. Just be like calculated. Like make sure if you guys are going for interview, you have somebody coming with you or they know your whereabouts or That's really great advice. Yeah, I don't want people stealing our future. Jeff Bezos and you know? That's the reality. So just throw yourself out there. Like what you're also doing with the show, it's dope. You know, Thank you, you so much. Literally putting yourself out there, exposing yourself to so much. Yeah. You know, and you just learn from it. And how does it feel? Is it so scary? It, it really is scary. It's no, scary. Like, now that you do it, ah, come on, ah. I thought you were on the same page. Okay, but now. I still feel really you still nervous about it. But you still do video, it. Oh my god, it's such a strain in time. <laughs> but yeah. So just throw yourself out there and you'll be fine. You'll be fine and please let us know if this helped you along your journey. Don't keep that information to yourself. Just let us know that, okay, tell me you actually once inspired me to do, to shoot my shot, even when I knew I didn't have experience. And now it got me somewhere. And that is really the type of energy I'm trying to have brought back to this channel. Mm. That <laughs> I'm trying to get this information to help someone who didn't have this platform mm. to receive the information. And I'm so, so glad that you joined me and shared your information and your story with my viewers. And I definitely know that you'll appreciate it. So, thank you, thank yeah. you for coming on my channel. It's been a great interview. Thank you so much for having me. So, if they awesome. want to connect with you, where can they find you on your social media platforms? Uh, you can check out Space Salad Z A on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Zonke Bonke. And my personal one is Tabo underscore Blingo underscore Tulo. T S O L O. And. I forgot to mention, we have a hot Amapiano track out. We really? Shouting a, a challenge. And uh, yeah, we want it to be some of December, some of the year. What's so it called? It's called Dopa Dash. Oh! I, I think maybe I'll send you the song okay. and then maybe you can play it at the end of the credits. So I'm allowed to, no copy Yeah, we registered it, so business. Register your stuff, guys. <laughs> Don't let people steal your stuff. So, yeah. Really Thank hot. you everyone for joining me. Make sure to like this video, to comment, to share and definitely subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next week Wednesday with another video at 12 p.m. Don't forget to join the live chat. We go live literally every Wednesday, 12 p.m. because I'm a consistent queen. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Bye everyone! Yeah, you gotta force, you gotta be forceful. You gotta force things down people's throat in a nice way. Hey, please let me know when you guys are recording or when you started it.
I pressed your chord. Okay, yeah. yeah cut the, the, the part that I said false. I said it in a nice way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I will cut it. So I will cut you it. You need to cut it! <laughs> I get you, and I get you now. I'm not even sure if we're allowed to do that. <laughs> Too late. I don't know if my volume is loud enough. Because I need to match your voice. I can't be like... Oh, snap. And so, we'll both be... Can you match my level? I don't know. <laughs> 